Greetings all. Tonight we're going after the Flaming Star Nebula. Now the Flaming Star Nebula is both an emission and a reflection nebula out in the constellation of Auriga. It's about 1500 light years away from Earth and tonight we're going to do it in both uh, broadband to get the natural colors uh, that are out, out there from the reflection nebula. We're also going to shoot it in narrow band, but I suspect that it's going to end up being a composite uh, broadband augmented with the with the hydrogen. I might be able to get enough oxygen and sulfur to make a narrow band version. I don't know, but uh, we'll see tonight uh, what the night brings. This target defeated me a year ago. Now I got to say that even though I collected a bunch of images on it, I was unable to pr process it in a meaningful way that gave me a picture that I like. So since I've had a year of practice, year of experience, I'm going to go ahead and try it again tonight. The Flaming Star Nebula. Now, this video of my efforts to film the Flaming Star Nebula is heavily influenced by some of the viewers on the YouTube channel. And I'll tell you how that is. You see here, I've been using this gray tape uh, to hold my uh, dew heaters down so, so that they all stay together and put the heat at the right spot. And one of the viewers commented on that, that uh, he thought it was uh, funny, but he uses arm bandage uh, stuff uh, to hold it down. This is cloth or else a, part, uh, else a cut sock. Now, I like that idea, and I'll tell you why. Because even though I've been using this gray tape and it works, I always worry about getting the sticky stuff right here from the tape on my telescope. But I like this idea of using that uh, arm bandage stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this gray tape with the arm bandage stuff uh, for this video and I'm going to try that out and see how it works. The other thing that's heavily influenced by uh, viewers from the YouTube channel, I've had several people comment that I should check out Nina and primarily because I've been, I've been struggling with some focus issues um, and I talk a lot about the meridian flips and how you have to be really careful about those. Well, two of the things that Nina does is it will do autofocus for you. Uh, it, it will also do a completely automated meridian flip. And it's got a lot of other stuff too. It's a quite power, powerful software. But I don't generally like to try things that are new. I like to stick with what I know. So I'm going out on a limb here and I'm gonna try this Nina software. So we're gonna be using Nina tonight. For the first time this will be first light on nina now i have done a lot of research and stuff because i don't want to wait waste a lot of time i've went ahead and loaded nina up on my computer i've downloaded all the drivers and stuff and i've actually hooked nina up to the telescope and i've done everything i can during the daytime to make sure that it works but tonight we're going to try to use it for the first time in a imaging session and again thanks to some comments from viewers of the YouTube channel. Now I told you that I was going to replace this gray tape with some uh, arm bandage stuff and I'm serious about that so let's go ahead and get it done. I'm hoping to be able to cut through this without cutting my dew heaters. That would be a tragedy right there. making some real progress. All right, I can tell you one thing. 
that gray tape it sure worked all right and there was no danger that it was going to come off and for those of you who are wondering it did not leave any sticky stuff on my telescope so it's all good but i do have two arm bandages here i'm i'm not going to tell you where i got them from but i got to be careful that my wife doesn't see this video because her splint on her arm came up a little bit light this morning. But anyhow, it was a good sacrifice, I think. Anyhow, I got two arm bandages to wrap my dew heaters up with here. So let's see how that works. There it is right there. It looks really secure. It feels pretty solid. I, th I think this is going to get the job done. And so thanks to South Bronx for mentioning this. We are getting ready to get going on the Flaming Star Nebula using Nina for our session manager. Uh, there, there it is right there. You see it. Uh, that's uh, how, that's how I'm going to want to frame it up. Um, so what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to get this framing exactly the way I want it. Checking up here, I've got the right telescope, got the right flattener, got the right camera. So this should be good information. And I think I want to frame it right there. Now what I'm going to do is go right here to the center of image and do a shift click and that's going to put a marker right there you see that that we can go back to now we can click on that because there was no star there but now it gives us something we can click on and we can go up here and get our right ascension and declination coordinates for this exact spot right here uh, you can do the same thing by uh, putting the red Red Cross center of image there, and then reading these coordinates over here. But uh, those are hard for me to read, so I find it easier just to do it this way. So this will this is the framing that we'll be looking for. Uh, you, you can see down here I've got uh, I've got Stellarium already turned on. Uh, I've already turned on my telescope, and uh, I did the balance. It's sitting in the parked position right now, just waiting for Polaris to come out. It's going to be another 15 or 20 minutes probably before I can see Polaris to do my polar alignment. So uh, that's where we are. We're just kind of sitting, waiting right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn Nina on. Uh, I wanted to turn it on for the first time uh, while we were doing the video, so... Uh, we're going to turn it on and see if things connect up the way they're supposed to. Now, I'll tell you that uh, I'm using my Z uh, Z103, and I don't have a motorized focuser on this telescope, so I'm going to be doing all the focus stuff by hand, so we won't get to look at that. But the rest of it, including the automated meridian flip, uh, we'll be able to look at. So notice here I've got a profile set up for the CEM60 and the Z103. That's the one that I'm going to select. I think I, I do want it to ask me each time I turn it on which profile I want to use. So, so I'm going to leave that off. I'm not sure that's what that means. All right. So now I can hook up the uh, camera uh, by clicking this connect button over here. Uh, I could select the filter well, hook it up by clicking this button, uh, the telescope, and PhD2. Uh, I could hook those all up individually, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to click this button down here, which says Connect All, and I'm going to see if that, in fact, connects all of my equipment uh, all at the same time. So here we go. Uh, reconnect all devices, okay. All right, it gave me some notices down here. 
well, they went away quicker than I can read them, but they were all green, so I think that uh, I think that's all good. It looks like uh, everything connected up. Uh, it went ahead and uh, launched PhD two. It's uh, it even started it looping it, uh, I, but it did not pick a star and calibrate. So I don't want it to loop. So I'm going to turn it off for now. Let me just make sure it hooked up the right stuff. It did. It hooked up the right stuff. Chip uh, temperature is currently 16.5. I want to run it down to minus 15. So I'm going to go ahead and get that going now. Now let's go take a peek at uh, the Sky Atlas. <clears throat> I've been uh, struggling a little bit on figuring out how to how to find objects <clears throat> in the Sky Atlas. I say I want to find Capella. Because I, I think we're going to use Capeller as our mount synchronization and focus star. All right, there's a there's Capeller. I'm going to push this search button. No, nope, still didn't find it. So I don't know how come it doesn't know what Capeller is. Seems like it ought to. So what I'm going to do, I'll tell it one star, and then I'll tell it Capeller. See if it finds it that way. Nope, it still didn't find anything. I don't know why it doesn't know where Capeller's at. But I know a different way to find it. So I may have to do a little more work on this Sky Atlas. Otherwise, the other way I know how to do it is uh, go in here to Stellarium. And if, let me go over here to Capeller because that's where we want to go to first. Select Capeller. Now go down here in, in the framing tool. Now what I can do is uh, click this button here, get coordinates from the planetarium, and then it will pull in the coordinates for Capella, whatever I have selected back here in Stellarium. Yeah, it looks like it's thinking. Yep, it pulled, the, it pulled in the coordinates for Capella. And it's going to think for a minute and... Then it's going to pop up its uh, database picture of Capella over here. Keep your eye up there on Polaris, and it's uh, not out yet. There it is. There's Capella right there. That's just the database picture, though. That's that's not my picture. But anyhow, Capella is here in the coordinates. I think if I go slew right now, it's going to do its uh, best shot at finding Capella, and then it's going to stop. And then we can go to the image tab and. Do the plate solving. So I'm going to hit slew and then see, see if it's going to plate solve until it gets on Capella. But I don't think it's going to do that. I think it's going to make its best guess and then stop. We'll see what happens. So yonder it goes. Uh, it is going in the right direction. So that's a good sign. But yonder it goes towards Capella just like we told it to do. Yeah, I think it. Uh, I think it went where it thought Capella was and stopped, and that that's all it's going to do. That's kind of kind of what I thought it was going to do. So what we're going to do, uh, we'll go ahead and take a picture. I think yeah, this here is going to take the uh, picture. It should take a one second exposure. Yeah, that may not be focused. Well, there's a Capella down there, so it got pretty close. All right, let's see if it'll plate solve. My focus might be good enough to do a plate solve, and it might not be. We'll give it a shot. Now, this time, I have sync on, and I have reslew to target. So this time, when I click the uh, run button, it, it's going to keep going until it gets there. So here we go. See, it... it Okay, it's it plate solved. It's not in the tolerances. It so, so it knew where it was at. Now it's slewing to the target. Uh, now it's doing its five second settle, and then it'll and then it gives you up here. Up here it shows you the error, uh, how far it was off. It looks like the maybe its own target because the it says zero error and it's and it stopped uh, doing anything. Let's go take a look at the image. Yep, and there it is right there. So we are on Capella. So just to uh, summate though, then 
When we called the target up here and did slew, it only made one attempt to get on the target and then it did not plate solve and solve its way on over to the target uh, from, from here. However, when we went to the imaging tab, if we go to the uh, plate solving, since we had a sync and re slew the target turned on, uh, then the next time we tell it to slew right here, it, it's going to keep on going. Let's turn on live view right here. Uh, put the bat knob mask on, we'll get a focus, and then uh, jump on over to Flaming Star Nebula. Okay, I think that's as good as I can do it with the uh, bat knob aid. I'm, I'm focused as best as I think I can get it. Now let's go ahead and get over on to the uh, Flaming Star Nebula. Uh, let's re uh, let's find the center of our frame that we want. Let's see, we set about right here. So shift, click, there's our marker. Now let's select that. So now we can import this into the framing tab. All right, so go to framing, import the coordinates. Now that should pull in um, to the... That should make the center that spot that we that we want, so we get uh, framed up exactly the way we want to be. The only thing that I'll probably have to do is rotate the uh, camera, uh, but this should get us to the right spot. All right, that's where it's going to take us. Now I don't think this camera rotation is cor correct. It's not going to know the camera rotation until it does a plate solve. So obviously, what it's showing us is not what we want. I'm going to tell it to slew. It already thought it was there, so, so it didn't really do anything. All right, now let's go to the imaging tab. Uh, plate solving. And we'll click this snow. So now it should plate solve its way on over to the Flaming Star Nebula. So it's Plate solving now. Okay, so it knows where it's at. It knows it's not in the right spot. Sinking the telescope. It just did another small slew. I heard it. Now it's settling. Now it's going to take another picture. Repeating. There's the error right there. And it seems like uh, it stopped. And it looks like the error, I don't, oh, there we go. Looks like the error distance is zero, so it, it seems like it's there now. Okay. Well, I'm not sure. I don't know if this is for real or not. I have never seen guiding this good before. Huh. I don't know. Maybe that's real. But uh, we'll give it a shot. Okay, we've got about uh, 25 seconds here before our first image comes in. We'll watch it come in together and see, number one, if we're in the right spot like we think we are. And number two is, the, did we get the camera oriented properly like we think we did? So we're about to find those things out. So here, four more seconds. Let's watch it come in. There it is. That, uh, that does look to me like the framing we picked and I believe that the camera is oriented properly.